Good morning and welcome. Please stand for the opening hymn. reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, 
Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake there was fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I recall when Carol Poitier was, was elected the Supreme Pontiff of the Catholic Church. Say, viewing it on TV, I saw him come out onto the loggia or the balcony of St. Peter's Basilica, and there he gave his first address to the world. And his words began with, Do not be afraid. These familiar words are recorded some 365 times in the sacred scriptures. And some believe this to be a daily reminder to all Christians that we are to live every day of our lives without fear. I suppose many could say, that's easy for you to say. After all, we just threw, lived through the raging storm of Isaias. Did I pronounce that correctly? Every station I watched on TV pronounced it differently. But you know what I'm getting at anyway. We also know that life is threatened in every way today by the coronavirus. Our country is ripe with rioting, hatred, and destruction. It seems that everyone's life seems to be tinged with sorrow, sickness, tragedy, unemployment, our seniors struggle to live on less than adequate income, and the list goes on and on and on. But still, even in the midst of all of these upsetments, the Lord speaks his wonderful message to us. Do not be afraid. We might ask, is he crazy? Doesn't he understand the hardships 
and the difficulties that we face. We know that fear is a very real part of life. No doubt about that. But it's how we handle it that makes the difference. Yes, we live in turbulent times, but we are not unlike any other period in history. And the Gospel reminds us that the storms of life befall everyone, including the most devout followers of the Lord Jesus. And when the Gospel of Matthew was written, it was a widespread belief that good fortune was the reward for righteous living, and misfortune was the punishment for living a life of sin or unrighteousness. Despite an abundance of evidence to the contrary, that belief still persists today. When tragedy comes, it's not uncommon for us to hear, or at least think, what have I ever done to deserve this? Or, how often have we all said, why me, Lord? Well, the early church was going through a time of great persecution. Some of them must have asked the, these same questions. But the Gospel story is a clear, a very dramatic reminder that real Christians, earnestly seeking to walk with Christ, are not exempt from life's problems. Yes, we get caught in storms just like everyone else. Friends we know lose their jobs, experience financial failures, they have problems in their marriages, they get sick, their children get into trouble, their loved ones die, sometimes in premature and even tragic ways. Now, I'm certainly not asking any of these problems to hit your lives, far from it. That would be the last thing we'd want to do. But the truth is this. If faith in God protected us from the storms of life, it wouldn't be faith at all, would it? No, it would be almost like a business deal. It would be a premium that people pay on an insurance policy that seems to be underwritten by God. And as long as we make the payments, He provides the protection. But there would be little or no faith in that kind of arrangement. It would simply be a pious attempt at self-preservation. But the Gospel teaches us that in the midst of all of this turbulence, Christ never forgets us. And he will always be with us, even in the direst times of our lives. The disciples were in a desperate situation. The wind was straight in their faces. To make progress in a rowboat was impossible. To turn around and go back, also impossible. Every sailor knew that on a stormy sea, you never turn a boat broadside to the waves. The best that they could do was go headlong into the storm and hope that they could stay afloat. But in the midst of all of these turbulent times, Christ appeared. He did not abandon him, and he will never abandon us. He will never forget us. And keep in mind that when trials come, this is in no way punishment from God. When the storm of sorrow comes, he will be there with his words of comfort. With the storm of temptation, he will be there with his strength. When the storm of guilt comes, he will be there with his words of forgiveness. When the storm of discouragement comes, he will be there with his words of hope. And in the midst of life's storms, if we truly look for him, we will see him. And if we truly listen with open ears and open heart, we can hear him say, get hold of yourselves. It is I, and do not be afraid. But you know, so often, we're like the disciples. We don't recognize Christ when he comes into our lives. The disciples thought they were seeing a ghost. Our problem is that the Lord comes to us 
in such simple, humble, and gentle ways that sometimes we don't see him at all. Perhaps we're looking for him in the wrong places. In this, we are probably like Elijah in our first reading today. He looked for God in a strong wind. Did he find him? No. He looked for him in the earthquake. Did he find the Lord there? No. He looked for him in the fire. Was the Lord there? No. And after the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. There he found the Lord. Like Elijah, the Lord comes to us in such simple ways that sometimes we don't recognize him. But he comes to us in the support of our families and friends, the understanding and the compassion that are shown to us as teachers, the community of the church. He comes to us through the scriptures and through the sacraments and a whole host of other ways that we can't even begin to imagine. But be assured he'll be with you when you need him the most. And if you even doubt that, just think, if God could close the mouth of a lion for Daniel, if he could part the Red Sea for Moses, if he could make the sun stand still for Joshua, open the prison door for Peter, put a baby in the arms of aged Sarah, raise Lazarus from the dead, he will certainly be with you and do works far greater than these. Yes, our God is an awesome God who does great things. And to all who perhaps are wounded, discouraged, anxious, worried, fearful, think you are facing life's problems all alone, take to heart the words of Jesus today. Do not be afraid, I am with you. And the Lord promises that he will never disappoint us. And always remember, God always keeps his promises. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord and Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us to live for our salvation. Let us pray. Strengthened by the power of God's love, we offer these petitions. For church leaders, that they will lead with courage in times of peace and turmoil, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will see an end to the COVID-19 pandemic. And for healing and consolation of all who have been affected by the virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer those facing difficult decisions, and for those who are distanced from their faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders, members of the armed forces, for healthcare professionals, 
and for all who risk their own lives for the protection of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are ill and suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may God grant them healing, strength, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they follow Jesus, the risen Lord, into the kingdom of light and peace. And especially for Michael Coppola Sr., whom we remember at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy and justice, may we rise above our human fears and walk with courage in the light of the Lord. Jesus is Lord now and forever. Amen. Amen.
human family and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, Jesus, now present in our midst, since we are gathered by his love. And when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures, he breaks the bread. Father, send your Spirit to consecrate our gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our saving Lord. On the night of his last supper, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
I do want to share with you that today Monsignor Georgia is celebrating a birthday. So on your way out, be sure to express the appropriate condolences. <laughs> I just hope I look that good at 45. <laughs> Let us pray. May this communion with which you have blessed your people confirm us in the light of your truth, O Lord, and guide us safely to your glory. Jesus is Lord now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.